Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I went over and uh, registered in the computer lab after class I did. Sorry? Mention? Sorry? I went over and registered in the computer lab, as you mentioned last class. Uh -huh. All I really had to do was just sign a slip of paper. Yep. There was no set up, setting up a counter. Anyway. Okay. Well, that's good. You know, they changed the procedure from last year. Okay. Last year was worse because you know, they were not using individual accounts last year. And as a result, you know, you have to, you have, you know, your own specific account on those computers in that lab, and that's why last year it was more involved. So this year they streamlined everything because the same account goes, you know, campus wide. So that's a, that's a good thing. Yeah, I, I like people to come back and complain and say, you know, tech is not nearly as bad as you said it was. <clears throat> that would be good. I don't have anything against that. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I graded the last homework, but not the one before that. So I still have one more homework to grade, you know, to give you, you know, some feedback about subroutines. <clears throat> In other words, if you go to, I, re I graded this one, you know, the one that I gave you guys, you know, after the uh, return, recur recursion with return value, uh, but not this one yet. So I still have to grade that one. Are there any questions about um, recursion, subroutine calls, returning a value, and so on and so forth? No questions? I just have one thing to say, you know, just, just so that you know, we, we can see it from a slightly different view. When you're dealing with a return that has multiple invocations, okay, let's say we have you know, return invoke x plus invoke y, Okay. We don't know what x does, we don't know what y does. In the trace, there will be three times that you will be executing exactly the same line. Okay, The first time is coming in from whatever line is before this line. That's the first time. The first time you get to this line, obviously you cannot perform the addition because you don't know the result of invoke x or the result of invoke y, let alone you know, actually doing the return statement. So what you need to do next is to invoke x. Now invoke x will mean that your, the control of the program will go on to subroutine x and do whatever subroutine x does. Okay, not necessarily recursive, you know, but subroutine x will do something, and at some point it will return back a particular value. Okay, so we'll just call it your know, v one for the first value. When you get back to here, it will be the second time you execute the statement. Okay, because you know this time you have the left-hand side of the addition resolved. But you still cannot perform the addition yet because the right-hand side is still an invocation without a particular value. So that means, you know, okay, this is the first time you get here. Then you, get, then you go into the subroutine x. You perform whatever subroutine x will, you know, should do. And subroutine x will, in return, give you a value, v1. And then the next thing you want to do, okay, we'll just call this step three. And then the next thing you want to do is to invoke y. So that would be the fourth thing you do. And subroutine y will do whatever it has to do, and then it will also come back with a particular value. We'll call this v2, and that's step, step five. So that's why you will get to the same line three times in the trace. The first time from the line before this line. The second time when you return from x. And the third time, when you return from y, okay? Now, at the third time, when you return from y, at least in, in this case, then you have this resolved to a particular value, you have the other one also resol uh, resolved to a particular value, then you can perform the addition, and then actually go ahead and execute the return statement, or whatever it is. It doesn't have to be a return statement, it can be you know, any kind of statement, it can be an assignment, it can even be a conditional statement, or something along that line. So when you have the, then that kind of set up with the two invocations, based within the definition of the original invocation, is that when you go out twice, it seems like more than just three times, you can seem to hit it six times or something like that? No, it should be just three times. You, on the, on the, in the trace, you will see this line executing exactly three times. But only for that invocation. If this is inside a recursive subroutine, and you know x or y is that subroutine, if it is recursive, then it's a, it's a different story. Okay, if it's recursive, then you have other invocations of the same subroutine, 
and each one may have multiple occurrences on that line. So you have to distinguish you know, the concept of an invocation. An invocation is basically a case, an instance of having that particular subroutine executing. But with recursion, you can have multiple of those instances kind of stacked up on top of each other. And so you have to be careful you know, which context are you talking about. And that's why in the class, I always talk about, okay, now we're back to the context of column blah to column blah, because you know, that tells you, you know, in what context are you executing the statements. Okay. Any other questions about this particular example? Any questions? Okay, if there are no questions, we'll go ahead and continue with the practice final exam. And I can see seven people have tried. I think um, you know, more people should at least give it a try, not to really look at the questions, which is also useful, but also to look at the interface and make sure that you won't be stumped by the interface itself during the actual test. Because you know, the worst thing that can happen is someone go into the test, not know you know what button to click or how to upload a file and accidentally you know end the test you know before you know he he or she is ready so that would be bad <clears throat> we'll continue with this test and let's see i know we have dealt with the first one i know we have dealt with the third one and the fifth one is something that we have done already as well so we'll go ahead and start with the second one we might have dealt with that one too. I cannot remember. <clears throat> okay, have we done this one? No? Okay, this is a really easy one. It looks really kind of nasty because, you know, it looks like we have both recursion and also some other form of nesting. In other words, we have an invocation within an invocation. Okay? And when you see an invocation within an invocation, it's no worse than something like this. You just have to resolve the invocations step by step, starting with the innermost invocation. So we'll go ahead and take a look at this particular example and see why it is not really quite as bad as it looks. This one is one that I would say it looks worse than it is. Okay. <clears throat> Go ahead and save the file first. Okay. So now we can actually go ahead and trace this code. We have Starting with two comment, uh, two columns. Um, the precondition there's nothing to say because once again we don't have global variables anymore. You know, I'm trying to get rid of global variables whenever I can because it's just not a good idea to use global variables. And that's why we then we can start execution on line nine. Line nine is uh, basically a print statement. That's the last thing that we want to print is to print a value of some kind. But I don't know what value I should print unless I have invoked you know, S2 to find out its return value. But now we have, a, we have two invo invocations within the same statement. <clears throat> okay, if you take a look at this, we have the outer invocation which provides the value to print. But I cannot, do the, I cannot perform the outer invocation unless I have resolved the inner invocation. Because I need to deal with this invocation first so that I know what argument I should use for parameter n that belongs to the outer invocation. Okay, so from that perspective, it really is not much different from what we have seen here on the board because it, it's just not right next to each other, except this one is, has one inside the other. But you still have to resolve one invocation before you can you know, start the next invocation. So that means you know, what we need to do in the trace is to invoke S2. Okay. Every time we invoke S2, it does not matter whether it's the inner, inner one, the outer one, or the, uh, the other one on line 6. We need a return info cell to tell us where to go back to continue execution. We also need one column per parameter and local variable. Fortunately, in this case, we only have one single parameter, n. So the question now is, what is n? Now, if you look at this one here, I cannot be dealing with this one yet because I don't know what 
is the value of the inner invocation. So that means I must be dealing with the inner in invocation, which means I'm passing zero to n in this case. Are we doing okay so far with you know why we are dealing with the inner one first? Yep. Usually, if we can do, we will do the n on the right hand side first. Right? The very further one first, or oh, it doesn't matter. If it is side by side like this, then we use the left to right order. Okay. But if it is like that in a nesting <laughs> order, then you don't have a choice. See, with this one, you can still kind of argue and say, well, you know, the actual order should not matter because addition itself is it's, it's commutative. And even if addition is not commutative, <coughs> as long as I use the value in the right order, it should still be fine. But in this case, because it is nested, you don't have a choice. You have to get rid of the innermost invocation first, then you move your way out you know, to resolve the values. Is that okay so far? Is that somewhat making sense? Okay. <clears throat> so in this case, because we are dealing with the innermost invocation first, that means when we specify the return info, this is what we, this is how we specify it. <coughs> we have to get back to, to line eight. I mean, uh, we have to get back to line nine. When we get back to line nine, the print operation obviously has not performed yet. It is pending. But not only that, the outer invocation also has not taken place yet. So that's why you need to write down the outer invocation to remind yourself, oh, we still have to invoke S2 one more time before I get the value that I'm going to print. On the other hand, the inner invocation would be done already, and it will resolve to a particular value so that I can use that to specify uh, parameter n for the outer invocation. So let me just expand this and so that we can see the entire thing. Are we doing okay so far? Why we are taking care of the inner invocation first and why it is represented like this as the return info cell. Okay. So once we set up column C and column D, we you know, go ahead and start execution in the subroutine. I cannot emphasize you know, enough that whenever you invoke a subroutine, you start from the first line of action in the subroutine. Okay? Whether it's recursion or not, doesn't, ma doesn't matter. You start from the first line of action. In this case, line three is the first line of action, and then we, specify, and then we evaluate the condition n equals to zero. And well, guess what? It is true the first time. Great. We don't have to actually do any recursion this time around. <clears throat> The condition of line three being true means that we just move on to line four. Line four doesn't do anything that's really interesting. It just returns a value of one. Returning a value means that you have to do three things. One, to locate the rightmost return info cell. In this case, it's column C. Copy and paste it. That's the second thing you do. And the third thing to do is just to replace the question mark with the value that you're returning. In this case, we are returning one on line four, so we just you know, change the question mark to one, and we are done with return one. Are we doing okay so far with this? Okay. <clears throat> After line four, we don't have anything else to do in the conditional statement, so we go all the way out, and we arrive on line eight. Line eight is the end of the subroutine, so we just go ahead and remove or deallocate these two columns. Now when I say deallocation, it means the, those two columns still exist, except they're not in use anymore. Okay? So that's what I mean when I say deallocating something. It is still there, it's just not being in use at, that, at this time. Then where do I go? We go back to line nine because return info tells me to go back to, to line nine. But this time when I get back to line nine, which is the second time that I go to line nine, line nine now looks like this. In other words, C6, the cell C6, tells me what line nine looks like at this point, and also tells me what else has to be done on that line. I would like to do the print, but I can't because according to this,